when we talk about AI, we talk about sometimes relatively expensive tools mm-hmm. and uh, some companies that are relatively larger mm-hmm. have a very uh, deeper and broader uh, perspective of trying to make this organization more efficient at all times. Whereas smaller organizations have a very harder time trying to exactly mm. both mm. afford technologies that increase their efficiency. Yeah. yeah. So how can small businesses try to mm. apply different mm. uh, types of AI in their business yeah. to be able to compete yeah. with larger businesses? Uh, uh, that's probably a very, very good question. I mean... Um, uh, wh- if we compare with digitalization, to, for example, pre- uh, 10 years ago, I think uh, small companies were, in general, lagging behind, well, I- if they were not sort of digital startups and that kind of companies. But I think uh, what happened there is, of course, that some of these uh, digital tools that they later on started to implement, they became off-the-shelf products. So maybe we are in the same situation now. That is, uh, well, AI is, is fairly uh, expensive right now. It's, it's uh, costly. But, I mean, as time passes, I think we will see much more, uh, maybe quite uh, quite fast, off-the-shelf products. I mean, open AI sources, et cetera, et cetera, that small companies can more, more easily adopt. Uh, so I think... Yes, today big organizations are probably more on the forefront of, of trying and using AI solutions uh, internally and, and, and externally in, in relationship to other customers, etc. But I would say that um, with time and maybe more quickly than we think, we will see much, much more of uh, open AI sources and platforms. But if you look at the market right now mm. in terms mm. of the AI companies that provide perhaps, as you uh, said, off-the-shelf type mm. of uh, products to different companies. Mm. There are very relatively few companies that have that type of uh, really uh, at the um, edge uh, techniques that mm. many might want to buy mm. uh, because it's very relatively expensive yes, to develop yeah, these. Yeah. Do you think that there is a possibility of it remaining relatively expensive for a long time? <coughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, that's a very difficult question to answer. Maybe maybe um, it could be different depending on what business area we're talking about. Uh, because I think some some industries and some applications area, uh, application areas are probably more on the forefront than others. So I think maybe we need to see it from from what industry and what application area we're talking about, uh, I can't give you an example, but uh, b- but that's at, at least what we've seen in, in other areas that there, there are some some areas that are much more in, in the forefront. And uh, uh, maybe we can, if we talk rather than industries, if we talk about uh, organizational functions, well, one of the areas that we have seen is is uh, and has been there, this has been there for long. Uh, it's in the marketing area. We have lots of di- different sort of uh, AI-based uh, marketing applications that are becoming uh, maybe uh, less costly quite rapidly. Um, so I think, uh, and marketing has always been in the forefront of AI adoption, I would say. Wh- when you I- investigate o- organizations and w- what internal functions is it that are most rapidly adopting AI, it, it's, you can say, on average, it's definitely the marketing uh, operations uh, because they have been working with big uh, customer data uh, and uh, customer data analysis uh, for very long. So I, I, it's it's not so pr- so surprising, and maybe there uh, I'm just speculating now. Maybe in that area we will see uh, more of uh, uh, less costly, at least uh, AI applications coming to market. Yeah, it is uh, always interesting when one thinks about the competitive mm. aspect of businesses providing these type of mm. uh, services to uh, different customers. Uh, but we talked about the fact that these techniques arise from uh, the needs of companies. Mm. How can, from an economic perspective, 
companies try to recognize areas of need that they themselves might not necessarily be aware of even. Mm. I think I can come back to my previous point there. I, I think if you start looking at your organization and w- what are the issues that we need to solve here in the organization, and I, I think I- if you start with the sort of uh, efficiency-related uh, challenges that the company has, then I think you can quite easily, I guess, I- in most organizations, identify uh, problems that can be solved with AI. So I, I would say that if we, if we divide what, what can AI be applied for in organizations, I think starting with efficiency, but I think the more tricky aspects are probably uh, the next step when you're going to use it for uh, effectiveness, that is developing uh, improved services or new types of services for customers and others. And maybe in, in, the, in the third step, how can we use AI for our long-term innovation processes in organizations. I don't think so many companies are there yet. So I think starting with understanding the the efficiency-related w- uh, issues in organization, maybe that's the tactic to get into AI use. Um, and these innovation processes, do you mean that companies might use these type of innovation, a type of innovative uh, AI to think about what the company might lead to in the future? Yeah, yeah I think so. I, I think there's a good opportunity to use AI. Uh, I don't know uh, how many are doing it today, but I mean, a, the, the type of new type of analysis that you can get out of a, an AI solution is, is quite interesting. I, I think also, uh, I c- maybe I can give you an example. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about, for example, um, back to marketing, uh, and, and I mean, in, in, the, in the marketing area, I, we know that customers are uh, can now uh, access quite uh, large amounts of, of, of long-term data. So we have the g- opportunity to do some very good uh, AI-based analysis of uh, customer behavior. Uh, yeah, everything related to to marketing, sales, and, and long-term customer contacts and interactions. Um, and y- if we do that, if you use that big data, I think you can come across, for example, I, I mean, I, in marketing, we talked about marketing segmentation. I think you can discover, and that's maybe the first step towards innovation, we can discover completely new market segments uh, with the help of AI data. And uh, maybe, as I said, maybe that's the first step towards some kind of, let's say, uh, market innovation. Mm. 